How's it going guys, it's Ryan here, and welcome to my high level Queen Black Dragon Guide for both Legacy and EOC. Uh, so this guide is for pretty much anybody, uh, whether or not you've had any experience at all with the Queen Black Dragon, and even if you've had a ton of experience and you just want to sort of optimize your kill setup a little bit and review the types of attacks and things, uh, this, guide, this guide will probably work out for you. Uh, so what I'm going to do in this guide is first I'm going to try and gear you up as best as possible, uh, then I'm going to show you how to get there, and then I'm going to go through every single attack and mechanic that the Queen Black Dragon has, and show you how to counter them as effectively as possible. Uh, after that, I'll be commentating over one Legacy kill, and then one EOC kill, and then it's sort of into the into the drops, and then sort of wrapped up from there. Uh, so yeah, let's jump right in. First off, the only requirement to fight with the Queen Black Dragon is level 60 summoning. Uh, I also require you to be done the songs from the Depths quest. It's a novice quest, takes about 15 minutes, and basically as a reward you get a passive damage reduction against the Queen Black Dragon. So, it's pretty valuable. Uh, now, in the recommendations, I recommend you have 90 plus of either attack, strength, defense, and magic, or range, defense, and magic. Now, a popular question on my last guide was, why the magic? Uh, and the reason for that is the higher your magic level is, the higher your magic defense is, and the Queen Black Dragon spits worms at you uh, that use magic. So you want to make sure to have a high magic defense, or you'll get torn up pretty well. Uh, now, 95 prayer for the turmoil and soul split curses, um, 50 agility for faster banking, it gives you access to the agility shortcut, and also either 80 or 91 herb lore with a boost, and that's for super anti-fires or overloads, um, and or overloads. Uh, now, quickly, if you're at this point in the guide and you're thinking, crap, I don't have that 80 herb lore uh, with a booster 85 flat on uh, for the super anti-fires, um, you might want to refer to my lower level guide, because in my lower level guide, I have a method of basically using a two-handed weapon uh, for 95% of the kill, and then basically showing you when you need to switch into an anti-dragon shield just for a couple of brief moments, uh, so that the kills are only about 5 or 10% slower uh, than if you had super anti-fires, but you don't actually need them. Uh, so yeah, if you want to do that, there's a link in the description below if you want to check that out. Uh, but once again, if you've got super anti-fires, you'll be good right here. Okay, so now into some info about the Queen Black Dragon. She's got combat level of 900, her max hit is 299 with range. Quick note, that's why if you don't have soul split, you'll be praying ranged. Um, her max hit's 150 with melee, and also remember to multiply that by 10 for EOC. Uh, now, attack speed is 3.6 seconds, she grants 3500 combat experience, 1155 hit points experience, and 1693.5 Slayer experience per kill. Her only weakness is Dragon Bane Bolts, and honestly, if you have them, try them out. They are ridiculous on the Queen Black Dragon. Okay, so now into the weapon setup. It's pretty simple uh, how it works. Basically, use the highest tiered weaponry you have. Uh, whatever that may be, use it. So, obviously, level 90s are tied, then you've got uh, your level 80s. Um, only exception is for melee. I, I would rank Darox and Varax above the God Swords. Uh, but it's kind of personal preference once you get under the Chaotix, um, basically use the highest tiered weapon you have. Okay, so now into the armor, it's the exact same deal, use the highest tier armor you have, but make sure it is of the correct combat style you plan on using. Uh, reason for this is, with Legacy now, instead of just uh, your plate, your legs, and your shield affecting your accuracy, every single piece of armor you have affects your accuracy now. Uh, so, basically, if you have like a mage helmet on and the rest melee, you'll have decreased accuracy because of that helmet. So you want to make sure you're using the same, uh, the correct combat style armor the entire time. And also, if you are using melee armor, you can have bits of like hybrid armor and things like that. As long as melee is part of it, uh, then you won't get any accuracy loss. Okay, so now into the potions. Uh, so basically, you want to take one of either overload, extreme, or superset. Um, you're going to want two or three, uh, possibly four, um, from the second row, so uh, prayer, basically prayer boosting potions. You're going to want a prayer renewal potion, and you're also going to want a super anti-fire potion. Uh, so yeah, that's the potions. Now into the food. Uh, first off, if you have overloads, you might want to consider Ceratome and Bruise. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using only Ceratome and Bruise because they do lower your stats quite a bit, uh, even though the overload boosts them back up. That only happens every 15 seconds. Uh, but it might be worth considering taking 5 or 6 Sarah Brews, uh, and it might make your kills a little bit faster. Now, short of that, uh, Rocktail Soups, Rocktails, and Sharks are all good options. Uh, now, into summoning. Um, personal preference for the first choices, you can either use a Yak or Unicorn. I prefer a Unicorn, uh, but it's sort of up to you. Uh, then you can choose a Steel Titan, I guess an Iron Titan as well, but less good once again. Uh, and then after that, Tortoise, Bunyip, and then lastly, a Terror Bird. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to get there. Okay, so you're going to start at any bank, make sure you've got the proper gear that you want. 
um, and then use the Port Serum Lodestone. Once you pop up in Port Serum, you're gonna run sort of northwestish um, up to these little rocks here. You can recharge your summoning at the obelisk, and then enter the cave. Uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna run west and then a tiny bit south. That is the agility shortcut with 50 agility. Uh, you just pass through there, and then you're basically at the entrance and you're ready to take on the Queen Black Dragon. Okay, so into the types of attacks, I'm gonna go into each of these in detail and show you how to dodge them. Okay, so the first attack is the firewall attack. Basically what you're gonna see is you're gonna see a message in the chat box saying that she's about to take an extremely huge breath. At this point, uh, she's gonna breathe some firewalls. So basically you're standing where you're standing and where I'm standing in the clip intentionally because that's one of the three gaps automatically in the flame walls. So uh, it just makes your job a little easier. But basically what you wanna do is you wanna run back and then run back forward through the flame wall uh, so that it'll only hit you once or hit you not at all as you see in the clip. Um, instead of hitting you twice, so it'll hit you 75 times two damage. Um, if you don't, uh, if you don't do anything to dodge it, if you run through it, it'll usually hit you once. Uh, but it can also not hit you at all if you time it perfectly. Uh, so yeah, that is how you dodge the flame walls. Pretty simple. Uh, you can also get an attack in in between uh, each flame wall. So as I did in the clip there. Okay, so the next attack is the Tortured Souls attack. Basically, same deal, you're going to see a purple message in the chat box saying that she's about to summon up some souls. Uh, basically, what you want to do is you want to have your most two squares to the west of you, and once the souls spawn, wait 0 0.6 seconds and then move over there, uh, and the souls attack will basically hit itself instead of hitting you so that's a very easy attack to dodge uh, but in the fourth phase if you are meleeing the queen black dragon the souls will spawn randomly uh, because there are four souls and they can't fit around you so they just spawn randomly uh, at that point you kind of need to think on your feet and just click somewhere so that you're not being hit by all four attacks uh, now if you don't manage to dodge the attack on the fourth phase not the end of the world you'll be dealt about 4,000 damage uh, you can eat through that pretty easily uh, now, the next attack is the Super Sneeze attack. Uh, for this attack, it's pretty simple. Basically, when you see the message in the chat box saying that she's about to breathe extremely hot flames, run to the side of the arena, and that way you're not hit for 187 damage each time. You'll only be hit for about 75. Uh, so you can't totally dodge this attack, but if you run to the side, it prevents the damage and reduces it greatly. Okay, so the next attack is the Time Stop attack. Uh, for this attack, basically, in the fourth and final phase, you're going to want to look in the extremities, the two far back sides of the arena, and you're going to want to look for a tortured soul who's basically babbling on about time being short. If you ever see a tortured soul go here, uh, it's your top priority to kill him. Uh, so even if that means running through a flame wall or a super hot flames, you want to kill this tortured soul, uh, because if you get time stopped, you will be frozen for 15 seconds uh, while the queen black dragon remains uh, attacking you and while um, she summons up super hot flames and other things to kill you, uh, but during that time you can't eat. So it's very, very tough. It's basically it's basically ball game over if you get uh, time stopped. Alrighty guys, the next thing I'm going to talk about, and I don't have a clip for this because it's somewhat minor, uh, but the queen black dragon during the kill will potentially change colors. Don't panic or do anything crazy. All it means is if the queen black dragon turns blue, uh, you'll hit higher with melee and range. Um, and if she turns green, you'll hit higher with magic. Uh, so some people choose to bring like a magic weapon as well as a melee weapon and sort of hybrid it out, but it's not really worth doing. So I would recommend just continuing to attack the QBD. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to mention was the giant worms. Uh, so basically what happens is whenever you end a phase, an artifact will glow. I'll talk about that a little bit later when I go through the kill and which ones to touch. Uh, but basically you want to touch the artifact as quickly as possible because the longer you wait, the more giant worms spawn. It is not worth it to kill the worms, you just need to tank them out as best as possible. And the last thing I was going to mention is occasionally the Queen Black Dragon will siphon hit points off the souls. If the souls are right next to you, you may as well give them a good whack with your weapons. Uh, but if they're like off to the side or they're like running around the room or anything, uh, don't chase them. Um, unless, of course, they're also time stopping you. Uh, because that does happen sometimes where uh, the QBD is basically siphoning uh, the tortured soul's hit points. Uh, so taking, take, basically damaging the tortured soul uh, in healing herself while the soul is time stopping you. If that's happening, obviously kill the soul. It's still like a normal time stop. Uh, but yeah, that is all the types of attacks, and now we're going to go into the actual full shebang kill. Alright, so now it's time for me to commentate over a full kill with Legacy and then also with EOC. Uh, there will be a timer at the top of the screen. Uh, so yeah, let's do it. 
Okay, so first off, we've got the legacy kill, and in this kill, I'm going to talk about a lot of the different strategies, and basically, we're putting together everything that we've talked about a little earlier in this guide. Uh, so first off, make sure you've got all your prayers on. Uh, you're going to want to be standing where I'm standing for the duration of the kill, just because it's an automatic gap in the flame walls, which is pretty helpful. Uh, so yeah, you're basically just going to stand there and attack the Queen Black Dragon. It is very, very straightforward at this point. You just kind of chill out. Uh, now, I'm going to talk about the artifacts a bit. Uh, pretty much after the first phase, the artifact right in the middle is going to glow. Uh, after the second phase, it's going to be the one uh, to the southwest, and then the southeast, and then all the way far back south after the last phase to actually end the kill. Uh, so basically, you want to touch that as soon as possible. Uh, so as soon as her hit points is at zero, it will start glowing, and then you click on it as quickly as possible. So as you can see, it glows and I click on it. Uh, so my gear for this, I was using very high level gear. I've got my Tetsu and my Dragors. This wasn't me going for a speed kill or anything. This was more of just a slow kill. Uh, there's the Tortured Soul. Wait for it. You click and he's dodged. Uh, so yeah, this is like a sort of general straightforward kill. As you can see, I'm not killing the Soul or the Giant Worm. Uh, they're not worth killing. Uh, unless, of course, it's a time stop or a siphon. Uh, so yeah, two flame walls, same deal. You run back and then you run back through them. And as you can see, I only got hit by 75 damage total by both flame walls. And it is glowing, so I'm going to go click on it. Uh, now, something to mention, don't run back through a flame wall. You will get absolutely wrecked. So it's better to wait and have a couple more worms spawn uh, than having to actually run back through a flame wall. Uh, but yeah, just continue attacking the Queen Black Dragon. Uh, as you can see, it hasn't been too challenging so far. Uh, now, you can note the Queen Black Dragon just turned blue. That means he is weaker to melee attacks. Um, Aside from that, doesn't really mean much else. Uh, but yeah, same thing, souls pop up, and you dodge them. Uh, now, if you don't dodge them, you'll be hit for about 100 damage per, uh, usually a little less than that, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, but yeah, uh, now we're on to the last phase. So the last phase is the harder one where you've got four souls at a time, you've got four flame walls at a time, and you've also got the time stop attacks, um, and things like that, so you do need to be kind of careful. Uh, that's me eating my first food of the kill. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, I'm just moving my camera around looking out for uh, time stop attacks and yeah souls come but it was only two uh, that can happen sometimes as well uh, and yeah as you can see very very straightforward kill um, and not too bad time wise either about two minutes and 20 seconds uh, so yeah not bad at all that is the first kill so hopefully you guys understand uh, sort of what's going on and why I'm doing what I'm doing and yeah, as you can see, I only used one food and a couple unicorn scrolls, so not too bad at all. Okay, so now this is my other kill. This is my EOC kill. Uh, this was my first ever attempt at a speed kill. Uh, so I've got this kill in here for a totally different reason. Uh, this is me killing the Queen Black Dragon without dodging a single attack of any sort, just standing in that one spot, focusing on killing the Queen Black Dragon as quickly as possible. Uh, the point of this is kind of just to say that uh, you can kill the Queen Black Dragon very, very effectively uh, without knowing the mechanics. I even started at low HP accidentally, so I brew up a bit. Um, you can kill the Queen Black Dragon very, very quickly without worrying about the attacks if you just focus on DPS. So even gear-wise, like I'm wearing full bandos, that's level 70 power armor, so not the best defensively. Um, and you can basically just focus on DPS and try to tear face, and you'll see by the time of this kill that you can it, it works. If you're having trouble with all the mechanics and things, uh, try out just a crazy DPS setup, uh, because you can do it. And the other impressive thing about this kill, and this was my first attempt at a speed kill, so don't note like, oh my god, that's so slow for a speed kill. Um, but the other kind of interesting thing is I didn't even end up using all that much food. Um, like, I'm starting with pretty much no food left. Um, and no healing familiar and I only used I think one or two food in the entire kill uh, So basically what you're doing you run back you touch the artifact and then you run back onto the platform uh, Now another thing I didn't say before is don't hang out on that platform back there or you'll be hit uh, For rapid uh, 150 damages, so basically just don't chill out on that platform There's really no reason to that's why I don't really mention it earlier like there's no point in just kind of chilling on the platform, but when you go there, be quick to, to head back. Uh, check out this flame wall dodge. Boom, perfect. Uh, so I guess that's the only flame wall I ended up dodging. Uh, the other thing I did is I used a berserk just to go even faster, and yeah, that's me tanking a super hot flames, uh, not to worry, and that is the end of the kill. About a minute and 33 seconds, which is pretty, um, pretty decent, especially for a first attempt at a speed kill, but the basic message I'm trying to come across with there is if you've got high level stats, it is not that difficult to kill this boss. 
uh, even if you're having trouble with all the mechanics, you can kind of just YOLO it and you should be able to get some kills and then over time you can kind of improve your, your QBD killing style. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the end of the kills. Um, now I'm going to just mention this again, but if you've got any questions about anything, uh, feel free to put them in the comments below and I will respond to them ASAP. Now into the drops. So you can get Royal Crossbow pieces that are very common. You get about 250 to 300k per. Uh, Dragon Kite Shield is very rare. It's worth about 300k. You get consistent supplies like Lanadimes, Onyx Bolt Tips, and lots of ores. Uh, you can get Lanadimes. Um, 50 Lanadimes is about 520k, for example. So you can make a lot of money at this boss. Uh, the other drop you can get is a Draconic Visage. It's somewhat rare. I've had about five or six of them in my long amount of time killing this boss, and they go for about 1.2 mil each. Uh, so you can make a ton of great constant money at this boss, probably three to six mil an hour, depending on your kill speed. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this guide. As always, if you have any questions about anything, feel free to let me know in the comments below, and I will reply to them usually the day of, usually the hour of, but it depends, obviously. I'll get to them as quickly as I can. So yeah, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a great one. Good luck in the Queen Black Dragon, and peace.